The one with the apothecary table is the 11th episode of the sixth season of Friends. This is directed by Kevin Bright. And as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode and share some thoughts. And interestingly, well, it's interesting to me. If you were to ask me to name my all-time favorite Friends episodes, I don't think this one would come to mind. But as I watched it, I kind of thought maybe this is a contender for one of my favorite episodes. It's just... Well, it's very, very funny and very memorable. And also, I don't really like Janine as a character, as I've mentioned before. So I kind of like what happens here. As always, there will be spoilers as I discuss what happens. And the intro establishes both main parts of the narrative. Well, kind of. It starts off with Joey coming over saying he kissed Janine. And then they're in Central Park and Joey is kissing Janine. And he's clearly very, very happy. And part of the narrative does focus on Joey and Janine. And the other part focuses on Pottery Barn. And Rachel gets a Pottery Barn catalogue. And she really likes the look of this apothecary table. And Monica points out that Phoebe hates Pottery Barn. But the table does hold 300 CDs. I miss the days when that was a selling point. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. But first of all, I'll talk about Joey and Janine. And also Monica and Chandler because they both come up the stairs or they all come up the stairs from having a double date and Monica and Chandler clearly had a great time. We think Joey and Janine had a good time, but when they're alone, Janine asks, how are we going to get out of that one? Referring to their date for the next evening. And it turns out Janine doesn't want to spend time with Monica and Chandler. He's blah and she's loud, which I have to say, Monica is quite loud. And to get out of their date, they tell different lies. Joey says that she is sick. Janine says that she has to go to a show. And obviously that makes it very obvious to Monica and Chandler that something is going on. And I like the fact that Joey told them straight up what was wrong. I think if he tried to spin the lie for even longer than he did, I think it would have got a little bit out of hand. And also I would have been waiting to see how Monica and Chandler reacted. But the reaction we got was very loud from Monica and understandably they were both really hurt and they do end up going out for another double date and it seems like things went well and Janine responds by saying we have got to move and I absolutely loved Joey in this moment I always loved Joey but he was so admirable because he said that Monica and if you like his family, if Janine can't be friends with him, and also vice versa, if Monica and Chandler were negative about Janine, then he just wouldn't be able to date Janine. And I, I really admire Joey for taking that position. I think it was definitely the right thing to do. So Janine goes to apologize to Monica in the hallway, and Monica, to her credit as well, she said that she would like to be friends as well for Joey. I, I will say, though, I feel like a friendship where your only friends for somebody else is never is never going to go according to plan. Somebody somewhere is going to get hurt. But they're trying for Joey, which I think is really great. And Janine ruined it by making a remark just as Monica turned around. And <laughs> Monica ends up chasing her out of the building, which is very immature, but also very funny. And Chandler and Joey go and watch them. And we conclude this part of the story with Joey coming into Central Park and saying that Janine has has moved out, which, on the one hand, seems drastic. But at the same time, even though Joey and Janine have only been dating for a really short amount of time, I guess it's easier to just move. Also, I don't know how quickly she was able to find an apartment. That itself is very impressive. But I don't like Janine. I don't necessarily hate her, but she's not a favourite character. So for me, I feel like concluding that part of the narrative that way definitely worked well. The other part of the narrative, and my favourite part, focuses on Pottery Barn. Rachel gets the apothecary table. And she tells Phoebe she got it at a flea market for one in 50. And she got away with it. No problems. And then Rachel and Phoebe are going over to Ross's. Rachel gets there first, and she finds that Ross has the same apothecary table. One of the reasons Phoebe hates Pottery Barn is because everybody ends up with the same mass-produced stuff. Case in point. And obviously Rachel's panicking because Phoebe's going to see it and realise that hers isn't a one of a kind. Thankfully, Ross bought some sheets as well from Pottery Barn. So he puts the sheet down and Phoebe comes over. Seems like there are no problems. 
we have this lovely scene where all three of them are on the sofa together. They're clearly having a lot of fun watching whatever they're watching. And then a drink gets spilled on the cloth. And of course, Ross immediately pulls the cloth off, off the table to get it washed immediately. And there reveals the other apothecary table. And I'd love to know if they had two. I don't know why I've just thought of that. I, I would imagine it's the exact same table and they just moved it between the sets. But if anybody can confirm that, please feel free to let me know. And Phoebe still thinks that her table is genuine and that Pottery Barn ripped off the design. And Ross is asking Rachel to name other time periods other than just colonial times. And he has a trick up his sleeve to get his own back. He gives Rachel $60 and tells her to take Phoebe to the flea market to get her some stuff, since she clearly has an eye for these bargains. And Phoebe is very excited about this. And then we have this really brilliant scene. I absolutely love it. I love Ross in this episode as well. I thought Ross was brilliant. But it's a scene where Phoebe and Rachel have been down to the flea market. Obviously, they haven't found anything good. And they walk past Pottery Barn. And Phoebe looks in the window and she realises that the furniture in Pottery Barn looks very much like their living room. And this is because Rachel had kind of bought quite a few other things from Pottery Barn. And Phoebe's now looking at them in the window. And of course, she realizes what Rachel's done and she's annoyed and upset and she wants the lamp. The lamp is basically the only thing they don't have. And she says to Rachel, and I absolutely love this, she says, are you saying that you would move out if I didn't buy that lamp? Of course, Rachel says no, not at all. And Phoebe says it again with more force. And Rachel, of course, says yes. So Phoebe now has to go and buy that lamp. She has no choice but to buy the lamp or Rachel will move out. And I rather liked that. I thought it was just a nice way to conclude that part of the story. It wouldn't be great if Phoebe remained angry at Rachel. But better still, she joined in. She joined in and bought something for Pottery Barn. And I think that that was definitely the best way to take that narrative. And I really had a lot of fun with it. I absolutely love the design of the apothecary table as well. And from start to finish, it's a brilliant episode. There's nothing about it I don't like. I mean, I don't like Janine, but... I certainly liked her character in the story and ultimately what happened there. Personal highlights would be, I guess, Joey. In fact, definitely Joey standing up for Monica and Chandler. I thought that was very well done and very sweet. And just everything revolving around the apothecary table. And also Ross in general. But I liked all of this episode. Definitely a really solid episode. And as I said, it it wouldn't probably come to mind if I was thinking of my top episodes but actually watching it now yeah the one with the apothecary table as a contender it's a really brilliant episode of friends